So, uh, with that in mind, I will keep this relatively short and sweet. I've, I've plagiarised a slide deck here that came from our user group meeting last week. Um, so, anybody that was at that, I don't know if there's any of the customers here that were there, unfortunately, you're going to hear some of the same stuff again. Uh, it is very generic across the whole suite of Mitel platforms, so again, there's a lot to talk about, so I'll keep it uh, as short as I can, as precise as I can. I'll probably just pick out the highlights where relevant. But if you have any more questions or anything else you want to talk about, then obviously come and call me while we're eating a sandwich or looking at the demo or whatever, and we'll have a chat. Okay. So, obviously there are a number of strings in the bow for Mitel uh, platforms that we have, from, from our core MCD platform to our applications uh, uh, platforms that we have here, uh, and some of the newer stuff that's in the portfolio that you may or may not be aware of. This is the rough idea uh, of, our, um, of how things stack up today from a development perspective and where, where uh, core things are going to hit. Uh, back in the trend in Mitel, this is actually calendar quarters rather than our financial quarters that confuse everybody, so Q3 2012 is, uh, is roughly now. Um, so we have the UC360 collaboration point and we have the Streamline product coming on board. Streamline, I'll discuss what that is in a minute with you guys. Uh, and around <coughs> the end of the year, we're looking at the next release of, uh, of MCD and uh, new versions of UCA and, and some other new products. And you can see the rest as we all have there. So very quickly highlighting um, some of the key functions that, uh, that I can pick out from MCD release six and possibly some of this in release seven. Again, there's obviously <coughs> about 25 pages of features and capabilities and things that will be slipping into these products as they come. I'm not going to go through all of those today, obviously I've just picked out the key bits for you. But just to give you an idea of where <coughs> what's informing Mitel's roadmap, unfortunately it's in our DNA to say the word cloud and virtualization at regular occasions, so they will spill out of my mouth. They are pieces that we see as business drivers today. Uh, people are moving their infrastructures to the cloud, they're either using cloud services like we are for Google or you guys for your Office 365 and others will be using other cloud services, whatever they may be, CRM services, so on and so forth. And voice become, can become a cloud application, as you know, through our, our friends at Botanic and other resellers where it's relevant. Uh, so cloud is one thing, but we also see um, simplicity being a key driver. You know, people need to be able to do more for less. We've outsourced our service desk. You know, we need to be able to do more with less resource within the MyTel. Uh, estate, and I'm sure it's very similar for some of you guys. So if we can increasingly make the MyTel platforms easier to deploy, easier for our partners to maintain, uh, and easier to upgrade, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So they're pieces that you'll see uh, coming into the platform as well. And then the last key driver, I guess, is the consumerization of a lot of that IT. So we've gone to the days where we could rely on you saying you've got a Windows desktop PC and a certain spec sat there on your machine, you know? Everybody bringing in their own devices, the bring your own disaster mentality that's going on at the minute where we've all got our own tablets or potentially our own mobile devices or we want to be able to use our PCs at home or our laptops or, or whatever that might exist out there. So those are things that are, that are informing the roadmap and informing our developments, just to give you an idea. So some very specific features I want to talk about. So we have um, coming into platform location-based routing, uh, which increasingly is, again, we use cloud deployments where you've got a, a large centralized deployment of Mitel systems but potentially users sat at multiple geographic locations around the world. Today they effectively operate as a single system which is great from an IT and an administration perspective but for an end user who picks up the handsets, dial zero and wants to speak to their switchboard operator downstairs, you know, there's no controls in the system today to manage that sort of deployment. Similarly, if I pick it up and dial the emergency services, you know, if I'm breaking out of a system in another geography, I don't want to be talking French to the local emergency service advisor or, you know, whatever it might be. So location-based routing will be inherent in the system, the ability to define where somebody's located and when they want to access local services, be it help desks, be it operated functions, be it emergency services, the system will know where you are in the world and choose those services for you automatically. Okay? Uh, we provide the ability to provide call billing via SIP, which is something we don't do today. So our standard uh, reporting platform, the reporting capabilities, we spit out to uh, the Oaks and the, uh, you know, various other platforms that are out there to provide call billing. There's no SIP capabilities in there, so that sort of thing will go in. Uh, we'll be able to provide, much like we can do with a certain variant of the virtual MyTel solution today, we can provide the embedded messaging platform, um, but for the vast majority of off MyTel boxes, you can't provide embedded messaging. So we'll be able to provide that on the industry standard server variant, which is where you're providing your own server to run the MyTel platform. You'll still be able to have embedded messaging capabilities in there. Um, from a sizing perspective, we'll be able to increase uh, the clustering capabilities, the size of the clusters that we can deploy, because again, the larger corporates demand 
you know, larger clustering capabilities in there. Uh, so we have customers where we are butting the end of some of those clustering capabilities today, so those bits will come along. And also increasing the amount of uh, cluster zones. So these are where you're defining specific geographic locations again for users and saying if I'm talking from geographic location A to geographic location B, I'm going to put some bandwidth management, core control, potentially compression between those. Again, today there's a limiting factor on how many zones you can create. We're just scaling that up, so improving that. From the admin perspective, simple things that people want to be able to control centrally, like uh, you know, rolling out a policy that says the backlight is going to turn off after one minute automatically and overriding what a user could potentially program on a phone today. So that sort of thing coming into the um, embedded systems management, so stuff that you'll be in control of centrally rather than relying on your end users to control. And also codec control. If you want to force a specific location to use a certain codec rather than letting the system automate it as it would do today, then you can do it. So mobility services are in the platform um, and they've been in there for a while. Dynamic extension, uh, those sorts of capabilities that we know and love. But we see a demand at the low end for somebody that doesn't need all those fancy handoff capabilities. They just want a simple, my phone rings and my mobile device rings, all my external devices, whatever it is. So there's a, a new concept for us, some simple twinning capabilities in the platform, which will be priced accordingly for their capability and give you a, a lower cost of entry into that mobility service than you would have today. Key to the platform, I think, for us ongoing, again, as we look at the, going back to that consumerization of IT and allowing people to bring whatever device it is into their business to utilize, most of those devices probably have some sort of SIP capability on board, uh, so they can appear as an IP device to us at the end. Today, if I wanted to make that device part of my Mitel telephony capabilities, again, I'd be using the mobility services and dynamic extension. So the SIP device would have its own number, plus I'd have a DDI number, I would use and I would link those together via my personal ring group. We're moving away from that requirement for the SIP devices and allowing hot desking on SIP devices. So if I am using Bria for say on my iPhone as a client, I can put some feature codes into the Mitel system that makes that Bria client my extension number rather than it have to be a separate number as it would be today linked within my group. And that would also tie into some of our other devices that we bring into the market, the UC360. Uh, deck devices that you know a user or Wi-Fi device that somebody's wandering around the building with utilizing today. Uh, it's allowing that much more um, flexibility for the end users on that. And there's obviously always a raft of key uh, design change requests that come through our user group primarily, but may come through channels and specific requests. A couple of those I've just picked out for you guys is the uh, single button transfer to voice mouse, similar to what an operator's capability would have today. If I'm extending a call to somebody, I can just force it straight through to their voicemail. We'll give you the ability to set that up as a feature capability for end users. So if somebody's on a handset, maybe they're handling a, a group of calls you know, for, for a team, secretary type working, then uh, it simplifies that. Uh, and sitting with the theme today of contact centers, something we see increasingly demanded is the ability for when a, a, an ACD call is completed uh, for us to be able to say we're going to send that call off somewhere primarily probably for a post-call survey of some kind. Okay? So we'll be able to automate that routing of that call at the end of an ACD call. I'm not exactly sure how that function will work, whether it's going to be defined by the end user or whether the administrator will set that up centrally yet. It's all still open to discussion, but uh, it's something that's going to be implemented. So send that call off potentially to the IVR routing platform, take a little survey from the user post call, uh, management. So that's sort of key ideas of, of some things that are coming through uh, the MCD 6 and 7. Okay, so I mentioned the Streamline platform, um, release one. This is just about to become available. You probably see some marketing information from us if you're on any of our lists or see this stuff start appearing on the website. Um, Mitel obviously operates in a number of uh, markets, be they different vertical markets or geographic markets that are potentially averse to voice over IP today. There are a lot of analog in specific locations, you know, uh, and maybe the drive isn't there to go and plug Cat6 or Cat5 wiring across a certain building. Maybe there are restrictions about how how we deploy that. So we have a partner um, in the market, which is a company called Firebridge, P-H-Y. Uh, you can look them up independently. Uh, and what we're doing is effectively repackaging their product. And what it allows us to do is put uh, IP <coughs> over your traditional copper cabling. So the old 1308 cabling you might have in a specific location somewhere. 
um, where you would have had an analog handset traditionally hanging off the back of that. It's a location that maybe you can't get wireless to, maybe you can't get Cat5 or Cat6 to. So this solution will allow you to effectively send IP over that copper cable in, turn it back into an IP communication out at the far end and connect up the handset to it. It'll provide the power to the handset through the dongle. And obviously I can still, within certain uh, limits to line length, etc., utilize that handset as an IP device for whatever I want to plug into the back of it. So there may be locations, security guard huts out in the middle of nowhere, potentially where you can't get uh, IP out to that location today. You can use this to extend the IP capabilities. Um, the first release, um, again, it's going to be very dependent on line quality and capability, but the bottom end I think we're looking at is roughly going to be around 380 meters. Um, so for those locations away from this platform, uh, we can deploy IP out there. We're utilizing this uh, with a large uh, central government deployment today, and it's tried to test it and quite happy. All we're doing is repackagizing it and making it a mind to product. Okay, so we're up talking about cloud and virtualization again. Apologize. But our big partners, uh, our big friends at VMware, uh, have a virtual desktop solution available today, which is called VMware View, which allows you to run your Windows desktop or, or other desktop on your device of choice. So VMware View clients are available for a number of devices. Obviously, you could run it on a laptop or a desktop PC. More likely, you're using some sort of VDI device, a little wires terminal or some small little unit You know, that's extremely low power, uh, with no moving parts, very reliable type unit. Or you may be wanting to access your services out on your mobile device of choice, your Android tablet or your uh, iPad or, or whatever it is you're remotely accessible from. So traditionally, obviously, voice didn't play very nicely in those virtual desktop environments. And again, being partners with VMware, we're able to work with them. And we can provide our unified communications application, the Unified Communicator Advanced soft phone client. We can provide that in a VMware view environment. So for a real world example, I'm sat there using my office workstation, quite happily tapping away on a keyboard in the middle of an email, in the middle of a voice call through my soft phone client. I could quite easily, in a couple of clicks, switch that straight over to my iPad get up and start wandering around the building. I still have access to my Windows desktop or whatever I was working on there on that client, and the Mitel Unified Communicator Advanced continues to function through that UCA sort of phone. So we're piggybacking on that VMware view environment. Obviously, it's not a, uh, an easy deployment. It's not a, you know, an easy rollout for you guys to get to that stage, but if you are looking at cloud-based uh, delivery of your virtual desktops, then uh, and you're already a VMware house, then that's a, a potential upside for you guys to look at in the future. Okay. So just to bring you up to date with a couple of things that have happened recently in case you're not aware, uh, we've deployed the Bluetooth module and handset now. So that's uh, the ability to stick a little unit in the back of a compatible Mitel handset <coughs> and run either a Bluetooth handset from Mitel or more likely your off-the-shelf little Jabra came free with your contract Bluetooth headset that you wanted to utilize in that environment. Complementary to the DECT, you know, similar idea but for those that have seen that wireless device, that's available today. Uh, we do have, for the hospitality, if there's anybody here, we do have a new hospitality phone, which is 5505, specifically branded for the hospitality market. It's a cordless deck device, it's designed to sit in the room and provide you know, voice and hospitality capabilities to those end users. Obviously, as you can see, it can be branded and uh, skinned accordingly, so that's new into the market. Uh, we've recently deployed the uh, gigabit variants of the 5320, 5330, and 5340 handsets. They're what we call the 5320E, 5330E, and 5340E. Uh, we've just announced in the last couple of days, so it probably hasn't got through to you, that the 5330 and the 5340 will actually be removed from the market uh, around December time. So from that point on, the 5330E and the 5340E will be the, the direct replacements for those devices. Okay? We will continue to supply the 5320 at this time because it's the low cost device, a little bit cheaper than the 5320E and we still need to have that device at the bottom end of the market, self leveling device. Okay? We've improved the capabilities of the 5610, um, which I don't know if there's one behind, right behind Jonathan there, that little uh, traditional looking handset sitting on the, um, sitting on the rack there, so 5610. In a hospitality environment, that can be used for a lot of guest services functions now. Uh, where it couldn't be in the past. And something that we've been a bit, I think we've been a bit lacking on doing, um, we're finally getting to, is provide the ability for the UCA to integrate into the operator console. So we've supported the Microsoft environment since the LCS 2005 release. So the ability for an operator when they search for a user to get a little jelly bean next to the name to indicate what their presence and availability is. 
Um, you can't do that with the Mitel UC suite today. You will be able to in a, in a very soon place, which is nice. Okay, <clears throat> now you may have been exposed to this or not. I won't spend too long talking about it. I think it's a device you've got to play with and see for yourself to see what the benefit is. But we've just deployed to the market. It's, it's available now. It is the Mitel Unified Communications 360 device, the UC360. What this is, is a contained uh, audio, video, and collaboration device all within a single unit. It doesn't require any gateway products. It doesn't require any specific services. In fact, it doesn't actually require a Mitel telephony system. It's a, a purely SIP-based device designed to operate across the entire market. Um, its goal really is to be a personal collaboration device for an end user. So it's effectively a slightly larger variant of the audio conference saucer that you've got there. It's, it contains all that same beamforming technology. It contains twice the amount of microphones. It's a very, very good conference unit on its own from an audio perspective. But it also has this Android tablet or an Android-based unit attached to it. Uh, which provides the simple controls for an end user and the, and the key point there is simple. It really is designed so that the end user requires no training to utilise this device. There's always going to be someone obviously, but uh, in our experience we've got plenty of people here that would normally require training that seem able to utilise this device today. Uh, there'll be plenty of opportunities to demonstrate this. It's in a room here, unfortunately, which is in use today, so I can't dig it out. But if you want to come in and have a look at it at any time, obviously talk to my friends at Britannic and we can arrange for you guys to come in and have a look at it. It does provide, effectively, four-party audio, four-party web uh, video, and four-party collaboration for end users through that unit without any extra hardware or devices. Uh, we've partnered with a number of people to provide simple things like Dropbox and Google Drive integration on the device. So when you want to access your presentations or the documents you want to collaborate with, obviously you can bring them in and plug them into the unit. It's got a, a USB slot for your memory stick. It's got SD card slots to put your memory cards in. Um, but you can also just access it straight off the cloud. Uh, and we've partnered with a company called Pixel that provides Microsoft document editing on board. So if you do want to bring up a slide and edit it halfway through, you can do that straight on the unit itself without having to you can access your desktop remotely or anything else. Okay? So, <coughs> set a build. just give you a quick idea of what's happening with the Unified Communication Suite. We have a new licensing model that's available. Yeah, another one. Uh, new CC licensing. Um, I'll discuss this in a minute so you understand what it is. It's available today. Um, just to give you an idea of where, oh, in fact, I'll leave that bit because I think we mentioned that a little bit later on. Apologies, I'll tell you something else to slide there. So the UCC licensing, <coughs> um, the market is telling us that end users, you guys, are probably a little bit confused sometimes when you look at a MITEL proposal and you want to, you see a list of licenses. If I want unified communications, if I want collaboration, if I want mobility services, Invariably, what you end up with is a list of about 10 or 15 different part numbers to deliver that capability. It makes perfect sense to me and my mates at Botanic here, obviously, but to you guys, it will be a little bit more cumbersome. So what you guys want, apparently, is a nice bundled licensing platform. I want to be able to base it on the role of my end users. You know, I don't want to have to think about how many of these I've bought, how many of those I've bought to deliver those services. I want to just buy that capability for that user and get everything I need. So that's what the idea of the UCC licensing model is. Effectively, it's bundling all these different components together at these three different levels to give you these capabilities. Now, at the top end uh, and the middle end, depending on how your mix of users work out, just to give you an idea, it can, the bundle obviously is designed to provide cost savings as well. So you can save anything between 25 and 35% of the actual list price of those individual licenses if you bought them, if you buy them as UCC licenses. Just to be clear, in order to be able to deploy UCC licensing, you do need a MAS server. Okay? You can't just deploy UCC with MCD. You do need MAS as well. And that's increasingly something you'll see. MAS is becoming a key function of the Mitel platform from a management and administration perspective as well. Just to quickly break down what you get, at the entry level, effectively you get a dynamic extension license, which provides that simple twinning capability. And you get an embedded mailbox, uh, sorry, a mailbox on the Newpoint platform. You also get the advanced unified messaging licenses with that, so you can provide proper synchronization into Outlook or uh, Lotus Notes if you've got it, or whatever it might be. So that's your entry level type user. The standard bundle adds in the ability for you to have the unified communications piece, so unified communicator advanced desktop, and also access via the web client to that unified communicator advanced. 
it, instead of giving you a basic dynamic extension license, you now get a multi-device user license, which allows you up to eight devices in your group, with no extra costs on top of those to deliver that. And it also uh, gives you access to the Mitel Collaboration Advanced Bridge, which was previously known as AWC, Audio Web Conferencing, for those that, that are not aware of the name change. So at the standard level, I'm a full collaborative unified communications worker. Okay? What I can then do is step that up into the premium bundle, which is obviously designed for a fully mobile or remote type worker. I also then get bundled in the mobile client for the UCA, which is available for the Android devices, the Apple devices, and the BlackBerry uh, RIM devices. It gives me access to soft phone in the unified communicator advanced environment, and it also gives me access to teleworking, all included in that license. So again, depends on the mix for you guys, but just so you're aware, UCC licensing is available. Uh, and it can be a, a cheaper way to deploy end users. So the Unified Communicator Advanced platform and uh, I guess also the CLAP MCA in here, just to talk about. Just give you an idea of some of the things that are coming down the line. Um, so I think the missing piece of our puzzle from the mobility perspective today uh, I mentioned the fact that you know, we might have an end user like me who has an iPhone and wants to bring it into my MyTel estate. Today, I do that with a third party client because MyTel doesn't provide a client. The general one we talk about is Bria because that's also made by Terry Matthews, who's uh, the Tele MyTel, obviously. So, um, but our competitors on the market invariably have their own client or their own way to deliver that. And I think as an end user, I'd be more comfortable buying a client from the manufacturer that I want to provide. So, our SIP soft phone will be available in the next release, which is due in the next month and a half or so. We're just about to get the internal trial ourselves. That SIP client will be available for the Apple and the Android type devices. Obviously not for BlackBerry, because BlackBerry we support the real MBS solution today for delivering that thing. So what that will mean is a user that has um, an Apple device or an Android device, be it in building Wi-Fi, out of building Wi-Fi, or over their 3G or potentially 4G connection once it becomes available, will be able to communicate with the MyTel system over the air and be a four-digit extension or five-digit extension over off your MyTel system. Okay? And obviously as that on goes, that will support SIP hot desking from that device or linking into your unified uh, dynamic extension group as it exists. We're also updating the video client in the UCA to make it a SIP-based video client. Today within UCA, if I create a desk-to-desk -desk video call, you may have seen a demonstration here on an example, it uses the MCA, it uses the, or the AWC, it uses the bridge product in the middle to create that. We're actually putting a native SIP client in, and there'll be some reasons for that that you'll see in a minute. Obviously that SIP client will provide some third-party video interrupt. I'll discuss that as we go on. Um, the Wi-Fi client will support automatic handoff. So in our first release, the goal is to make it that when I am in building Wi-Fi, it knows I'm in building Wi-Fi and carries on that call over the Wi-Fi infrastructure, thus not costing me minutes or you know, whatever it will cost on that call. The second I move out of the in-building Wi-Fi, if it can't establish a connection back to the MyTel, it will seamlessly move that call over to the cellular connection and vice versa. Stuff that the RIM service provides today through MBS and will attempt to do as well on that. We're updating the web client on the UCA. So today the web client provides click to dial capabilities. I can dial users in my business or dial telephone numbers using that web client. And that web client is obviously accessible via browsers, smartphones, and uh, tablets, etc., etc. What we'll increasingly do, because there is a, a percentage of the market that doesn't have access to a Windows desktop but does still want to control their phone, maybe they want to transfer that call, maybe they want to get a little pop up when the incoming call comes in so they can see who it is. Today you'd need the full Windows client to do that. In the future that would be accessible through that web client as well. Thus fill in the hole that we need to <coughs> satisfy those Mac customers or uh, you know, Linux customers potentially that are using that on their desktop or whatever it might be. Okay, I'll the others because I appreciate I'm talking quite a lot. So SIP video interop. <coughs> it's obviously a key driver for Mitel in this market. As Jonathan's mentioned, Videos here, video will make its way into the contact center and, and, and all other areas of the business, whether we like it or not. You know, increasingly people are used now as consumerization of IT. You know, my wife knows how to do a video call with me via FaceTime. Uh, you know, the kids are used to doing that sort of thing. It is something that's going to happen finally, I think. We've talked about it for a long time, but I think people are growing up with it now and it's going to happen. So when you make video devices, they've obviously got to be able to interrupt. And my tell has appreciated that. Uh, and making changes fundamentally to our core portfolio so that we can do that. So the UC360 device uses SIP-based video. 
obviously. The UCA desktop and mobile clients in the future will use compatible SIP clients. And they will all talk to each other quite happily, they'll be interrupt tested. Where relevant, we'll be able to talk natively to LifeSize or Polycom or other providers that, that, that will communicate with us quite happily. Where we can't provide that level of integration, we partner with a company called Video, um, that are also a VMware partner, and they can provide a fully virtualized software-only MCU that sits up in the cloud. Again. So we can communicate via a video unit to talk to any legacy video conferencing system that exists on the market, or potentially, you know, if Cisco doesn't want to play ball with us, we can communicate with them through the video unit, so on and so forth. So we'll see uh, increasing interoperability from our video capabilities on the Mitel platform, which is obviously key for us. Okay. Um, I'll just pick and choose a couple of bits out of here. So these are probably key things. The cloud again comes up. Um, increasingly we see people not wanting to deploy large exchange estates um, or large Lotus Notes infrastructures like Mitel is known and loved for many years. We've moved to Google now. We're all happy about it. It sits up there in the cloud. We can access our email, our contacts, and our calendar, wherever they exist. Uh, and obviously Microsoft have their equivalent, which is the Office 365 type capability. So Mitel will do everything we can within our portfolio to integrate into those two infrastructures where relevant. So provide the same capabilities you could have today if you were deploying maybe a full link environment and integrate into Outlook, um, or you were using you know, desktop clients to access these functions and capabilities like you would today. Um, so lots of work going on around that area. Um, the Mitel Collaboration Advanced Client is getting streaming capability. So today, if I want to join a conference, I actually click my little browser or open it on my tablet, join the web part of the conference through that, and then I'm able to pick up the phone separately, dial in, put another number on that, and the system's having to link me up in the middle and join me into the conference so I can hear what you're saying and see what you're showing. So we'll be able to provide audio conference streaming just like you would expect, like the, uh, the rival platforms from Citrix or GoToMeeting, whatever that, those sorts of platforms can provide today. Okay, we are seeing an increase in the scale on the virtual mass, which is good for us. Uh, so a physical mass today can be slightly bigger than a virtual mass can provide. Roughly, you know, a thousand users on a virtual mass today, but you get about two and a half thousand users on a physical mass, and obviously we'll scale that up to provide that. Uh, I mentioned briefly that the MAS is going to become key to the management of the Mitel suite. Increasingly we see MAS as just a, a simple commodity that goes with an MCD. So we don't have a MAS today. Uh, we'll look to see if we can redress that in the future with you and give you access to all these extra capabilities. But effectively what we're going to provide is turn MAS into the central single point provisioning in the Mitel suite. So the MCD today can talk to Active Directory, you can provision the users, roles and templates through the MCD, that all works quite happily. But if you want to set up MAS and set up a user for unified communications and collaboration and their new point mailbox, you have to do that separately on MAS, which doesn't make sense. So MAS becomes the central piece. So both the MCD will talk to AD, but the MAS will also talk to AD uh, and allow you to create roles and templates in MAS that says, hi, I'm Steve Williams, and I'll need a 5320 phone, I'll need access to new point advanced voicemail, I'll need access to unified communications and the mobile client, and I just provision that through one template and, and in a couple of clicks, and, you know, I can provision all those capabilities for any user. So speeding up that administ the admin and setup of users. Um, <coughs> I'll skip over that one. So last thing, very quickly, just to talk about, and again, another area I think Mitel has been remiss, and we've heavily relied on our, uh, our partner, um, partners to deliver these types of capabilities, is integration into the things that you guys use from a day-to-day -day perspective. Yeah? Today, CTI means probably bringing in somebody like Britannic um, to deliver some professional services or an application that they, these guys have produced or some sort of middleware to provide click into call, to provide screen popping, to provide integration at all levels. And Mitel has been very remiss about this down the years and not providing a great set of tools for an end user or a less capable channel to provide these capabilities. So we're having a new product in the suite which is called the Business Process Integration Gateway, or BPI Gateway as they call it. And that will have a number of off-the-shelf integrations into other types of products you would expect us to communicate with. It's not going to be a direct replacement uh, for the ad hoc professional services based type solutions that we can give, but it will potentially allow more rapid deployment of this integration into your business systems as it goes. 
the key to that is providing web services for core control capability. So as we look at virtual desktop environments and that it's, it's far easier for developers to use web services to set these up rather than full fat clients in these uh, desktop <coughs> environments. Okay.